Okay. Well, looking at instructional practices, it's just looking at two things. You know, as a teacher, did I actually teach the material? Did I teach it in the depth and in the complexity of the level of the test? And did I use the academic rich vocabulary of the test? Well, number one, it should change instructional practice. If you continue to teach the same way that you've always taught after you've looked at data, then you're missing the point of um, assessing students and, and using what they know and don't know, strengths and weaknesses, to guide your instruction. As you look at your assessment data, it gives you information as far as what needs to be reviewed, what you need to go back and reteach, and whether that reteach happens through whole group if the majority of the class is still not understanding it, or whether it's something where you just need to pull a small group of kids um, at a time to go over it because most of the class has it, but there are a couple of students that have some misconceptions. Um, what I do with the data that we get is um, I make sure that I read to see what all of the kids have done and then I use that to almost form individual IEPs for all the kids. And we use uh, assessment data to design our instruction in reading and in math. In reading we take the data and we actually uh, ability group our students and we break them into what we call flex groups and they're fluid groupings um, so we move students based on where they're at um, and we use classroom assessments to revisit and make sure that they're in the correct placement. It gives the teachers an idea as to where the gaps are at in learning. So that um, enables the teachers then to make tutoring groups and to start looking at ways to differentiate instruction to get those students up um, to meeting those standards. Assessment data drives all instruction because that's telling us whether what we're teaching is effective or if it's not working and what we need to do to change it. Um, to look for gaps, uh, to look for alignment in our curriculum. To, I'm really looking to see what is the, what has my student learned and what have, what have they learned, what haven't they learned, and what are really what's the process in their mind that's going on that's causing me either to get it or to not understand it. So I use assessment data in a lot of, a lot of different ways for uh, where I'm going to go next, how I'm going to differentiate instruction. When they, they did all right on the teach check with getting the information and knowing the point of an article, but things like text features, diagrams and charts and timelines, it exposed how they did not know how to tie those two things together. And so we realized in not only teaching them that they were going to be reading it differently from fiction, that this was a support for them that they needed to be able to use as well. Okay. I always use student assessment data at the start of the school year. Uh, it really does drive my instruction. I um, use it to identify the strengths and weaknesses of my students, and from there I build lessons to kind of fill in those gaps. However it is, the data drives the instruction that I'm doing, and they are able to understand that concept and master it without me losing any instructional time.